that we're going to serve him. We're going to worship him this day. We're going to lift up his name. Yeah. Amen. And how many you know he's worthy yeah. of all the praise yeah. and all the glory and all the honor that we can give him. This is a scripture that the Lord put on my heart even last night. Amen. Second Chronicles 7 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Heaven, you need your land healed. We know we got the, the land this world is healing. But how do you know your own person? Your land is Let's go to the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come this day thanking you for all that you've done, all that you're doing. Father, we lift up this service to you this day. Father, we ask that you would have your way. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would begin to, first of all, forgive us for any sins, Lord. Knowing and unknowingly, God. And Father, we ask that even now, that you would prepare our hearts for this service. Prepare our minds. Prepare us, oh God, as we begin to worship you. For we don't want anything to come between what you want to do in our lives today, how you want to change our minds, how you want to touch our hearts, how you want to do a new thing in our lives. Father, we don't want to come in between. Lord God, the salvation that's going to be coming forth today for some lost man, woman, boy, girl, can come and say, Thank you. 
Because God is a great 
Okay, we're gonna try that one more time. Good morning, abundant love. Good morning. All right, there it is. There it is. We just got through saying, y'all, we are blessed, and we want to show that in our actions and our words. Because if you're like me, you feel that this morning. Amen. Amen. Today, y'all, we are here to celebrate. Amen. We have four graduates that our church family would just like to acknowledge and praise and congratulate. Do y'all mind helping me do that this morning? Amen. Our first graduate is Mr. Jacob Gardner. Jacob Lloyd Gargar is the son of Sister Eleanor and Jimmy Gargar. He graduated from Midway High School with his high school diploma. His hobbies include running track and playing basketball. He gonna teach you some skills in this shot. During uh, his time at Midway, he participated on the track team, and he also worked toward earning his phlebotomy certification. <laughs> Jacob has plans to continue his education and obtain a nursing degree. <laughs> his favorite scripture is Proverbs 14 and 23. In all labor there is profit, but the idle chatter leads only to poverty. Jacob said we're not just going to talk about it, we're going to be about it. Amen. Let us congratulate Mr. Jacob Gargar. Our next graduate Miss Tyra Burr. Come on, man. <laughs> Escorted by the lovely Miss Tinty. <laughs> Tyra is the daughter of Mr. Freddie and Miss Sandra Cashaw. She graduated. She graduated with her associate's degree from Virginia University of Lynchburg. Amen. Her future plans are to obtain her LVN and nursing degree. Amen. We need nurses, y'all. Amen. Amen. And her favorite scripture is Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and in the earth. Let us congratulate Miss Tyra Burke. Our next graduate, Miss Tyasia Cashaw. Come on. Asia is the daughter of Mr. Freddie and Miss Sandra Cashaw. Amen. She graduated in April of 2022 from Southern Career Institute with a medical assistant degree. Amen. During her studies, she also earned her phlebotomy certification her CPR certification, and her EKG certification. Her future plans include relocating to Dallas, Texas, 
and finding a job in the medical field at a local clinic or hospital while continuing her education to pursue her passion. She wants to become a certified nail technician and open her own business one day. Somebody say entrepreneur. Her favorite scripture is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a hope and a future. Job well done, Miss Hyatt. And our final graduate is Miss Aaliyah Nicole Parks. She walked in that walk, guys. Aaliyah is the daughter of Reverend Larry and Minister Val Parks. She graduated on December 11, 2021 from Sam Houston State University with her Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice. And all the law enforcement people said, Amen. During her studies, she earned an advanced criminal investigation and crime scene technology certificate. Her future plans include pursuing a career in law enforcement here in the great state of Texas. And her dream is to one day become a Texas Ranger. But this is the part that I love. In her bio, she said, but I am willing to go wherever the Lord leads me. Pastor, she said, I will trust, follow, and flow. Her favorite scripture is Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all Things. God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. Amen. God welcome. At this time, we're going to ask Pastor Ross to come. Um, as we pray over these graduates, they've had tremendous success, but we know that they are not done yet, and so Pastor is going to come and continue uh, and to pray over them as they continue working and becoming everything that God has destined them to be. Graduates, I want you to know. That this is just the beginning. Amen. I know there was a lot of things you went through just to get to this point. Okay? College ladies, high school ladies, okay? And, but God brought you through it because He has something greater for you. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Because as you begin this journey to success, as you begin this journey to this next level that God has already ordained for your life, there is an enemy that will try to come and stop you, hinder you, push you back, anything he can do. But there is a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can even ask for things. And that God is on your side. So I just want to pray for you. I want to pray for you that you don't faint, that you don't quit, but that you would do like Paul said in Philippians, press toward the mark of a high calling in Christ. Father God, in the name of Jesus, 
Lord, I pray right now for these four young people, Father. God, that even before the foundation of the world was ever laid, you had already purposed them in you, Father. And Father, I thank you now, God, that the words of Jeremiah 29 is going to come to pass in their life, Father God. Lord, I pray that your purpose, I pray that your plan, Father God, even above their own, Father, will be manifested in their lives, Father God. Lord, I pray a special anointing to fall upon each and every one of them, Father God, as they endeavor, Father God, to fulfill the, your purpose for their lives, and as they endeavor, Father God, to even fulfill their own dreams. So, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Father God, you would give them the grace and the strength that is necessary, Father God, for them to be a great success. Father, you have called them into the kingdom for such a time as this. And Lord, I pray, Father God, that you would have your way. So, Father, I pray everything that's happened to this point was nothing but fuel for their fire, God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, that they would be mentally strong. Father God, I pray physically strong and I pray emotionally stable and strong, God, to fulfill your will, God. Now, Father, I speak over their lives that they will be the lender and not the borrower. That they will be the head and not the tail. That they will be above and not beneath. That no weapon formed against them will be able to prosper in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that success will seek them, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that the blessings of our God will overtake them, Father God. Lord, I pray that the platform that you give them, Father, in the realm of their responsibility, that they will use that platform to glorify your name, to exalt the kingdom on the earth, God. I pray that the light that shines in them, Father God, would never be put out. But that fire would increase. And Father God, give you glory and honor in this season. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, brethren. Let's 
honest. When the pastor, when the word says, wait on him, wait on him. Wait on him. Trust God. Trust the process. Because I promise you, the one that he has for you is out there. But get in position. Get in position. Pray. And just prepare yourselves for what's to come. Okay? Because when I tell you this is my good night. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen. Listen, God is a great God. And, and you know, we really need to start praising God for his yes. will being done. Yes. How many of you know marriage is his will? Yes. Amen. Amen. We need to start praising God for Amen. His will being done. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask you to prepare yourselves for our communion service. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask Reverend Halliburton and Minister Burns to come. Amen. And conduct our communion service. The Bible says that before we take communion, that we are to examine our hearts. And so this morning, I ask that before we get ready to take communion, that each one of us would um, take the time to take that personal examination as I pray corporately. Amen? And we pray. Father, we come to you now, God, asking, Lord God, that each one of us, as we take that introspective look to our hearts, Lord God, that if we see anything, Lord God, any sin, Lord God, that you would forgive us, Lord God, for those sins, Lord God, so that we would not take this communion, Lord God, and that it would not, Lord God, bring anything against us, Lord God. God, we thank you, Lord God, for the sacrifice that you made on Calvary for us, Lord God, that you came down, Lord God, sinless, Lord God, so that you can wipe away our sins, Lord. We give you honor and we give you glory for what you did, Lord God. We'll never forget the sacrifice that you made for us, Lord God. So God, before we enter into this time, into this holy communion, Lord God, if there's anything in us, Lord God, I ask, Lord God, that you would wipe it clean and that you would cleanse us, Lord God, from everything and anything, Lord God, that may be in us, Lord God, that's not pleasing to you, God. We ask, Lord God, that you would take it away now, God. And it's in the mighty and great name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 There's a recorded document according to Luke's account of this gospel that was written in chapter 22 that the time had come for the Passover to be killed. And he told Peter and John to go and prepare a place that they may have the Passover. He asked, they asked him, where shall I go? And he said, go into the city. There you shall find a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him to the house where he goes and ask the master of the house. For his guest chamber. There he shall show you a large upper room already furnished. And it was there that we commemorate, commemorate this day the life and the death of Jesus. Which he said, as often as you do this, do in remembrance of me. For without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission of sins. Amen. And as he said to his disciples, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, Take it, all rise. He gave thanks. He said, take, divide amongst yourself, eat the olive. For this is my body that I give to you. And then likewise, he took the cup, he blessed it, gave thanks, and said, take, divide amongst yourself, drink the olive. For this is the blood that I will shed on Calvary's cross. And as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me.
you alone are worthy of all of our worship and our praise. Thank you, Father. For all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you shall do, Father. Father God, we thank you this morning for this brand new mercy that we've never seen before. God, we give you glory. Now, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. By your spirit, oh God, I pray that you would speak to our hearts and our minds as your word goes forth, Father God. And Lord, we pray, Father God, by the, by the power and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, that this word would find root in the hearts of your people, Father God. That it may bring forth fruit in its season, God. And I give you the glory. And I give you the praise in advance. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. If you have your Bible, see, please turn with us to the book of Genesis. Hallelujah. The book of Genesis, chapter 39. If you're able to stay, I'm going to ask you to stay for the reading of the Word of God. Amen. Genesis chapter 39. Read for your hearing verses 20 through 23. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. And showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. Somebody say promotion. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. All right. Because the Lord was with him. Yeah. And that which he did, the Lord made it Ooh. to prosper. Amen. Uh, I want to disturb your comfort this morning. Yeah. And talk to you on this subject, the power wow. of his favor. Amen. All right. The power of his I would preface this message this morning with this thought and the thought is that you need the favor of God to make it in this world. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. You need the favor of God to make it in this world. When you look at the elements of what makes up life as we know it. We should not be doing as well as we are. Hmm. No matter what the state of your life, no matter the condition of your life, no matter the situations in your life, when you look at the elements of life, we should not be doing as well as we are doing. Because we live in a world that's full of evil. Yes. We live in a world that is full of wickedness. We live in a world that's full of sinfulness. It's easy to come to a conclusion that the will of God will not be manifested in this season because things don't seem to line up for our lives. And many times when things don't line up in our lives, as a believer, we become discouraged. And sometimes we become despondent because we, somewhere in our belief system, have adopted a theology that everything in our world has to be for us in order to get what God has given to us. Well, respectfully, I would like to disagree with your theology. On the grounds that God does not need anything outside of himself to bless you. Oh, let me say that again. 
God does not need anything outside of himself to bless you. You don't have to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth in order to be blessed by God with wealth. You don't have to be born with an overwhelming ability or talent in order for God to bless you with notoriety. You don't have to be born into an ideal situation in order for God to bless you beyond your situation. I've seen people during the course of my life, on all walks of life, that had the odds stacked against them. But they still rose above the odds into another level. And so the question then is, if the elements of life is not conducive, what is it that will promote us? What is it that keeps us? What is it that, that takes us from one state of being to another? And the question now is the answer is the favor of God. Do me a favor, lean over to your neighbor and, 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 and then really upset them and say, you don't deserve it. You don't, mm -mm. you don't deserve the air that you're breathing right now. You, you don't deserve the house that you live in. You don't deserve the car that you drive. You don't deserve the clothes on your back. And I know I may be upsetting some folk, but maybe I, I'm telling you the truth. You don't deserve none of it. Glory be to God. You ain't that cute. You ain't that handsome. You ain't that talented. You ain't this, that, this, anything. But because God favors you, yeah. oh, I wish I had somebody. The only reason that you're doing as well as you are is because of the favor yeah. of God. Amen. Yes, sir. Favor. Yes, sir. The word of God does not promise that you have to have things on your side to make it. But the promise is that you've got to have God on your side yeah. to make it. And in this season that we're living in right now, there are a lot of things that are not on our side. Yeah. This economy hmm. is not on our side. Yeah. Prophet Cat Williams put it like this. You should not be at the gas pump making life decisions. Yeah. Because gas is so high. Yeah. Oh, y'all looking at me like, oh, can't we uh, Y'all listen to me. <laughs> Racism <laughs> is not on our side. <laughs> the political climate yeah. is not on our side. When we, got, when we got preachers in the pulpit telling people they can't be a Democrat and be safe. <laughs> Sickness and disease yeah. all around us. Yeah. Poverty and lack all around us. Violence and greed all around us. But in the midst of these things that are not on our side, we can still be victorious. Yeah. We can still make it. Why? Because we got God yeah. on our side. Oh God. And God is able to make things that are counter-conducive to our well-being work for our good. And God will make them work for our good through the power of his favor. Child of God, you have to get that in your spirit, especially in this season, especially when you are facing things that are not conducive to the promise that God gave you, to the revelation God gave you, to the vision God gave you, to the word that God gave you, that you will come out of whatever you're facing because of the favor of God on your life. Because the truth of the matter is, in this season, the enemy has magnified the size of the odds. And in the eyes of the believer, it tempts to blind us to the favor of God that is on us. And the reason the enemy is trying to blind you to the favor of God is because he doesn't want you to know the power that 
that it has. Uh, uh, God has placed uh, his power in his favor. Uh, oh, help me preach this message. You lean over your neighbor and say, God placed power in favor. Ah, uh, God. Uh, when God favors you, uh, the power opens doors for you. When God favors you, uh, the power overrides the odds against you. When God favors you, the power in favor makes things that are set against you, God makes them bless you. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here that would tell your neighbor that I'm making it on the power of his favor. I am it's the power of his favor. It's not my gift. It's the power of his favor. It's not my family. It's not my friends. It ain't my looks. It's the power of his favor. Because when everything else fails, his power and favor prevail. Glory be to God. I wish I had somebody in here that was favored last year. Man, favored last month. And it didn't it didn't matter what you were going through. God still favored you. Glory be to God. I know, I know, I know when COVID hit, some people thought they weren't favored no more. But God kept them through COVID because he favored you. Uh, some of you had, had had your employer come and tell you we got to let you go. But you ain't missed a meal because God favored you. Uh, some of y'all been sick. But God heal your body, not because you deserve it, but because he favored you. Oh, let me mess up somebody right now. Tell your neighbor, I don't care. If you don't like me, I don't care. If you don't want me around you, I don't care. If you don't speak to me, because I ain't making it on your opinion. I'm making it on the favor. what we see in the text. The text is tailored to tell us that we see God has given Joseph a prophetic vision and he's taking him through the process of the manifestation of that vision. Mm. Please note now that every vision has a process a manifestation. Because when the vision is given, at that stage that is given, it's a prof it's prophetic. Because it has not come to pass at the time of the release of the vision. And the problem that we find is, is that when God gives vision, most people expect it to happen right away. And when it doesn't come to pass right away, they get discouraged yeah, yeah. and they give up too soon. Yeah. But I need to encourage you this morning that I know that there is a process attached to every vision. Because while the vision is ready, the process gets you ready for the vision. Ooh, oh. So don't get discouraged in the process because thinking the vision is not going to manifest because God is not a man that he should lie. If he said it, he going to bring it to pass. But God just got to use a process to get you ready so when he brings the vision to pass, you won't mess it up. Now I need to tell you that the process will cause you some struggle. Yeah. Oh, I'd be lying to you if I tell you that the process will cause you some struggle. Yeah. The process may, 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 may cause you to struggle with frustration. Yeah. It may cause you to struggle with disappointment. Yeah. It may cause you to struggle with some unpleasant things. But don't let the struggle cause you to abort the process. Why? Because the process will build you to handle the blessing. Glory be to God. Oh, God, I, I, I got to give God an extra shot right there because I, I prayed for, 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 for some stuff in my 20s that, that I couldn't handle in my 20s. Oh, God. And I'm so glad now that when I look back over my life, I say, God, thank 
you for not blessing me in my twenties with what I was asking you for. But God said, now that you're 40, you can handle it. So I'll release it. I wish I had somebody in here. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, how about your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you ready for it? Are you ready? I know you asked for it, but are you ready for it? Oh, God. Are you ready for that car? Oh, God. Oh, God, give me a Bentley, but you will give people a ride in a Pinto. Are you ready for it? God, give me a, a, a five-bedroom house. You can't keep your apartment clean. Are you ready for it? experienced some struggles in his process. Oh God. Oh all the dream simple saints say amen. He experienced some struggles in his process. He struggled with his brothers thinking. And how many of you know everybody can't handle your prophecy? He struggled with being thrown into a pit. Yeah, yeah. And left for dead by the folk that said that love him. Amen. He struggled with being pushed into slavery. Yes. And his experience that caused him to wonder what was going on in his life. Because he didn't see the process in the vision. Oh, come but he's looking now at his situation and it caused him to wonder about the vision. Yeah. And he had every legitimate reason to wonder from the practical sense because everything was not lining up for him. Mm. And I need to let somebody know that while things may not be lining up for you, keep a firm grip on your faith. Uh, uh, because faith will work on you while God works his favor in your life. Uh, uh, faith will give you hope for your future. Faith will tell you to keep on going when you feel like giving up. Faith will work on your mind, your heart, and your spirit. Don't lose your grip on your faith because your faith in what God is going to use to pull you through the process that he's using in your life and without your faith you won't experience his favor. Glory be to God. Ah, oh, God. Joseph now is in the process of God. Yes. And he finds himself in the palace with the position of chief administrator of the affairs of the captain of the guard of Pharaoh by the name of Potter. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph unknowingly was made, I have made the journey to the place where God was going to manifest the vision. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I need to tell somebody that you are in the place in your life what God is going to manifest a vision for your life. And I need to also tell you that the power of his favor has got you there. Oh my God. Oh God. I, it wasn't nothing else but the favor of God that got you in the position in the place for you to receive the vision for your life. Look back over your life. All the obstacles that was in your way. Look back over your life and all the struggles you thought through. Look back over your life and all the negative situations you came out of. Now you know it was you that brought you through. It was the power of his favor. I wonder if there anybody in here that ever had to endure a real attack from the enemy. I ain't talking about somebody rolling their eyes that's right. I ain't talking about somebody stepped on your foot while they were walking down the route down your road. I'm talking about a real attack. I'm talking about when you and the devil brought up some generational curses in your life. I'm talking about when the devil attack your mind. I'm talking about when the devil attack your spirit. I'm talking about when the devil attack your family. I'm talking about when the devil attack everything that God gave you. But tell your neighbor, I made it. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all saying it like it's a suggestion, though. I need somebody to say it like it's a 
on it. I made it, baby. I, oh, the devil didn't want me to get here. The devil didn't want me to be in the place that I am. But everything it tried came to nothing because of the power of the favor of my God. Now, thank you, Lord. Can I give you another warning? Yes. When the favor of God yes. is on your life, not everybody mm. will see his God. Some people mm. will see you as an opportunity yeah. All right. for their own personal desire. Yes. Oh, God. So now it was Potiphar's wife. Mm. He has all this favor on him. Yeah. Yes. Her husband loves him. Mm. But she's looking at him mm. in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, can I tell you that this was a scandalous one? Yeah. She saw the favor Joseph received from her husband yeah. mm. yes. as an opportunity to fulfill her own desire. Yes. But what she didn't see was God being the source yes. of the favor. Oh, God. She, she saw that her husband yes. favored him. Yes. But the scripture said God gave him favor with her husband. Y'all missed it. I, it, 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 it wasn't so much that, that that Potiphar just loved Joseph, but how many
enemy wants to do. Yeah. He wants to get you alone. Yeah. You know what? How many of you ever know that, 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 that the devil don't attack you in prayer meeting? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I told you I was going to disturb your comfort. Okay. But it's when you buy yourself. Glory be to God. And that's one of the things that the enemy has done in the pandemic. He's isolated people. Because it's easier to mess up a mind and pride. And he starts telling you, God ain't gonna do this. Yeah. God ain't gonna bless you. God ain't gonna, God is not gonna fix it. God is not gonna work it out. Mm -hmm. And because you're by yourself, mm -hmm. well, maybe he got a point. Mm -hmm. I've been praying and I've been believing and I've been trusting, and it ain't happened yet. But um, can I remind you what Isaiah said? They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Glory be to God. That because the devil ain't going to ever tell you to wait. Because God is saying, if you wait on me, I'll redeem the time and I'll bless you double for your trouble. I wish I had somebody in here that would lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I trust the process because God just got you waiting on something greater than you ever had. That you ever dreamed and you ever thought would happen. So with no mail service, she grabs his clothes. Starts to try to pull him into the bed with her. But Joseph. to God. Glory be to God. Because his faith in God made him faithful to God. Oh, oh my God. I got I to gotta stop right there. Don't tell me how, 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 how much faith you got. Oh God, and you missing in action. No, don't tell me how much faith you got. And you can't be faithful and every time the devil just throws a little something at you. You ready to throw your marbles in the ring and walk off. But God said, you show me how much faith you are when you can take a licking and keep on ticking. You show me how faithful you are and I'll show you how faith will work in your life. Oh God, his faith in God made him faithful to God. And Joseph ran out of his garment away from the clutches of his enemy. And can I tell you that when you are faithful to God, the enemy will lay traps in your way. But don't be trapped. Be true. Oh, lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't be trapped. But be true. Be true to your God. Be true in your faith. Be true in your promises. God has spoken over your life. Be true to his word. Because your faith in God will activate the favor of God in your life. Oh God, the Bible says that when Joseph was true to God and ran away from her, she got mad and lied on Joseph and she told her husband which caused the favor of her husband to change away from Joseph. Oh God, but tell your neighbor Joseph was living on Potiphar's favor. He was living on the favor of God. Come on, Christmas at the church. Lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't living on your favor. Thank you for helping me out last week. Thank you for the ride you gave me last week. I ain't living on your favor. I'm living on the favor of God. Oh, the Bible said that part 
Potiphar listened to his wife and he threw Joseph into prison. Now can you imagine what was going on in Joseph's mind? He was faithful to the vision that God had gave him. And he was hated by his brothers. He did what was right and he was thrown in jail. Now he was faithful to his master and he was thrown out of his favor. But how have you ever been there where you did the right thing and it seemed like it got you in the wrong place? Your situation turned on you. You didn't create this circumstance in your life and you feel like you're all by yourself and loneliness will make you forget about the favor of God and make you feel like that you're forsaken it'll make you feel like you're abandoned it'll make you feel like you're forgotten but I stop by to tell you that the favor of God doesn't avoid the favor of God doesn't forsake the favor of God doesn't leave you by yourself and just when you think that all is lost the power of the favor of God will rise up in your life I don't know who I'm talking to but there's somebody in this place that you came here broke, busted and disgusted you came here thinking that God had forsaken you thinking that God had turned his back on you but tell your neighbor with all the faith you can muster he's still here mm, I wish I had somebody that would just tell the devil he's still here I wish I had somebody that would tell your sickness he's still here I wish I had somebody that would tell your poor case he's still here I wish I had somebody that would tell your past he's still he's still here the Bible said that the favor of God did not forsake him and Joseph while in prison but favor followed him in the prison and I heard David say that he knew I walk through the shadow of the valley of death I'm not fearing cause I'm a super saint I'm not fearing because goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I find your neighbor and say, neighbor, look behind me. You're going to see a power that I don't have. You're going to see the power of God. You're going to see the power of his favor. I ain't supposed to be blessed like this. I'm supposed to be a statistic. But the favor of God is on my life. He goes in the prison and right behind him goes the favor of God. Ah, why? How do you know, Pastor? Well, the Bible says that right in the prison, the jailer that was supposed to be keeping him in bondage, favor, tapped the jailer on the shoulder and said, now you need to make him a leader of all the prisoners. And the Bible said that everything that Joseph told the prisoners, they did it. They obeyed everywhere. Look at the power of favor of God. Folk that would have killed him. Folk that would have destroyed him. Folk that would have injured him. Didn't touch him. Five your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can't touch this. You can't touch this. I don't care. But you can't touch this 
situation happen, that I defeated you because of the power of the favor of God on your life. The power of this favor will take you from nothing to something. The power of this favor will take you from the bottom to the top. The power of this favor will take you from the back to the front. Sometimes your devils get you blessed. 
Oh, I need to talk to some mature saints right about now. There have been times that I knew people didn't like me. And God made them bless me. Oh, y'all, y'all. Oh, my God. I need to talk to some people that's been walking with God. Don't repeat it, come. Yes, sir. Thank you, God. The favor of God has come. Yes, sir. Thank you for favor, God. And while we're praying for a situation change, we just need a favor revelation. Mm. Because once we can lock into the fact that we are favored by God, glory be to God. We won't be looking hmm. at the giants in our situation. Yeah. Right. But we'll start looking at what he put in our hand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. How many of you know favor can multiply what you got? Yeah. Oh, it be to God. Uh, God ain't got to give me a, a it again another. God will just take what you got. Yeah. And favor will make it work for you. Glory yeah. be to God. The favor of God. Come on, minister. It's the favor of God. Glory to God. My, my, my. Glory to God. Thank you. It's the thing that He uses. Amen. To bless us. Yes. Even when it looks like nothing around us is conducive to the blessing. say this and I'm going I'm 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 to leave you alone. When we start talking about favor will get you a house and favor will get you a car favor will get you some Gucci people say oh yeah favor, I need favor but have you ever thought about favor in terms of just making it have you ever thought about favor in terms of this joy that I have that yeah. favor gave it to me? Yeah. Have you ever thought about favor in terms that is keeping me? Yes, God. Glory be to God. This is the type of favor that Joseph experienced. He experienced and, and listen, when you when you read the story of Joseph. He had every reason from a practical sense to throw in the tank. But the favor of God was on him. And the life of Joseph teaches us that once favor is on you and you're faithful to God in your relationship with him, favor would never let you go. Yeah, yeah. I know you may say, well, pastor, I'm not living like I want to live. I'm not driving like I want to drive. Yeah. Favor never promised that to you. Yeah. But you are living. Yeah. And you are driving. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. The favor of God. Yeah. Sometimes I wish people would understand what the devil really wants to do in your life. Yeah. And if the devil had his way, you would be destroyed. And I'm not talking about death. Because death is just a secondary consequence to what Adam and Eve did in the garden. It's inevitable. But the devil wants to destroy your life while you live in it. And if you really understood what he really wanted to do, you would be like, oh God, I need your favor. Yeah. I need your favor in my life. If you're here in person or you're streaming with us this morning, 
said, Pastor Ross, I really feel like God doesn't favor me. Because when I look at my situation and I look at the things that I'm going through, it just, it just doesn't look like I'm favored. But I want you to know it ain't all what it looks like. Yes. Glory be to God. God is working on your behalf. I, I remember my wife and I, we were, uh, we had went to Cheesecake Factory in Austin one year. And uh, we ordered. And uh, we have a special dish we like. We ordered it, and I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think we ate all day. How many of y'all have ever been there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I'm gonna eat here tonight. I ain't eating all day. Yeah. yeah. I want to enjoy every all of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And put in our order, and my wife said, "Do you think they forgot? It took so long." And I was like, "Maybe I." It usually doesn't take this long. Mm. How many of y'all have ever put in your order with God? Yes. And you say, you know what? It usually don't take this long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Sister Matthews, we were sitting there waiting. And, and, and the waiter came by. He said, I'm sorry, God. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, your order's so long. But we had to make a fresh batch. Y'all ain't get it. Y'all ain't get it. He said, so, so, it's taking a little longer. Yeah. And Michelle, when they brought it out, your uncle started singing the happy song. Okay. It was better than what I ever had before. Just wait on glory to God. Maybe, 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 maybe he's making a fresh blessing for you. Maybe he's doing what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and you never experienced. And even in that example, maybe because of his favor on our lives. I said, look, you drove a hundred and some miles to get this. Yeah. Oh, I felt that right there. You, 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 drove, you drove through some rain and, and you drove through some stuff just to get here. And listen, you waited in line and now I got you sitting at the table. I ain't giving you just anything. I'm giving you the best of everything. Favor. And I don't want you to be discouraged in the season because you've been because you've been asking God. But his favor will bring it to pass. And if you hear you, you say, Well, Pastor Ross, I don't know a God like that. I don't have a relationship with a God like that. Look, you can fix it right now. You're streaming with us and you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior. You can fix it right now. If you're in person with us, these, these ministers are here to pray with you and to lead you to salvation. But if you're streaming with us today, I want to I want to ask you to, to, to just pray this prayer with me. Father God, I come right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask you right now, Father, to come into my life. I believe that Jesus is your son. And I believe that he died so that I could live. I believe that his blood is, has the power to wash my sins away. And make me white as snow. So Father, forgive me. Of all of my sins. Forgive me of all of my shortcomings. Forgive me of all of my iniquity, God. And God, I pray to come into my life. Jesus.
Jesus, come into my life. Take over my life. Lead me and guide me in the way that you would have me to go. And I receive you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you pray that prayer with me, congratulations. You're saved. Glory be to God. You're saved. Hallelujah. But I live in South Carolina. You say. Yeah. I live in the UK. I, you're saved. Yeah. Glory be to God. Because the power of God is everywhere. Glory yeah. be to God. And he can hear your famous cry. Now here's what I need you to do. I need you to find a Bible believing, Bible preaching, Bible teaching church. So that you can grow yeah. in this new relationship that you have with him. Amen. Glory be to God. And trust the process that he uses to grow you and mature you. Amen. And if you are in the anywhere in the vicinity of the Waco, Hewitt, Robinson area, I want to recommend a church to you that will help you grow, that will teach you the Word of God, preach to you the Word of God, where you, where you will be loved by the love of God. Glory be to God. And you'll grow in His grace and His power. And I speak of none other than the Above and Love Fellowship Church. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. This next call is for those of you who say, well, Pastor, I'm saved. But I'm struggling. And I just need prayer for this thing with my life. I tried to shake it. I even tried to fake it till I make it. But it just won't go away. But I want to tell you that you need to put your claim in. Because you can claim the joy, you can claim the peace, you can claim the happiness in the name of Jesus. Why? Because he favors you. Yeah. Glory be to God. And if you're here today and you're in person, I want you to come. As ministers are here to pray with you. Glory be to God. But if you're streaming with us today and you say, well, Pastor Ross, I need prayer. I need prayer for a specific thing in my life because I feel like I'm out here all by myself. I feel like I'm struggling by myself and God has forsaken me and, 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 the, and the favor of God because I'm looking at my situation but I don't see his favor on my life. I want to pray for you. Glory be to God. I want to pray for those of you who are online. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus for my brother, my sister, God, that is going through this struggle right now, Father God. Loneliness is speaking to them and loneliness is trying to tell them that God that you would not do what you said you were going to do. Frustration is talking and dis disappointment is talking and discouragement is talking and depression is talking and all of these voices are in their ear Father God. But God in the name of Jesus I come in the volume of your word Father and I command those voices to cease and desist in the mind and the ear of your people, Father. And God, I speak, God, and God, I come to them, and I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that your faith will start talking to them, and that their faith, Father God, would tell them that you're highly favored by God, that you're highly favored, and the power of his favor is going to open some doors for you. The power of his favor is going to turn your situation around. The power of his favor it's going to bring you from the back to the front. The power of its favor. So, Father, we put our claim in right now. And we claim real joy. We claim real prosperity. We claim it in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I pray that you would do them like you did Joseph. That everything they do prospers God. Not because of them, but because of the favor, God, that you have on the line. So, Father, we thank you in advance for what you're doing and what you will do in their life. Father, now we trust your process. 
Trust your timing. Yeah. But God, we embrace your favor. Yeah. And we thank you in advance. Yeah. For they will prosper yeah. and not be destroyed. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen and amen. Glory yeah. be to God. Somebody give them a praise. Hallelujah.
with the faith. Oh, oh my God, I feel God in here. The prosperity comes with the faith. Don't seek prosperity, seek faith. Oh, be the God because the prosperity comes with the faith. Can I tell you that the reason why God gave Job double for his trouble because God favored him. Glory be to God. That's why when he lost everything he had, faith started leading him to his favor. Glory be to God.
become a member part of the Brother Love Fellowship Church. If you're in person, I want you to come. Glory be to God. But if you're streaming with us, I want you to go ahead and put your name and the contact information right there in the in the box that we will go to get back with you. And we're going to make that happen. Amen. Praise be unto God. Glory be to God. If you're here, come. If you're here, come. God bless